Hello, everyone. Welcome back to this episode of Just Another Year Chicago. My name is Nick Rohde. We'll be jumping into our week 11 preview of the Bears versus Ravens in just a second. But quick disclaimer, this video was recorded before the news that Khalil Mack is out the rest of the NFL season, the 2021 NFL season with a season ending foot surgery. He's been fighting foot injuries for the last couple of weeks and the Bears have made the decision to let him get the surgery, to let him heal up for the rest of the season and be ready for next. So just want to give that quick disclaimer as we do discuss Khalil Mack could potentially be playing this upcoming Sunday. That won't be the case. So let's jump into the episode. But I will go back to this episode of Just Another Year Chicago. My name is Nick Brody. Join alongside my good friend and co-host Tony Sapita. And today, Friday preview, week 11, Bears are coming off the bye. A lot of news is coming out of Hallis Hall the last couple of hours, so we're happy to bring it to you. But our Chicago Bears take on the Baltimore Ravens this Sunday at Soldier Field. Yep, the Bears are coming off the bye week with some key players still questionable for Sunday's game. So let's see if uh, Justin Fields can do what he did in the second half against Pittsburgh. If he can do that against Baltimore in Chicago at noon. Uh, and I know we have here, we weren't sure if Lamar Jackson is going to be playing. He did return to practice today, I saw, on the grossest field I've ever seen in my life. So <laughs> if you guys see that picture, you'll know what I'm talking about. Uh, but before we kind of get into all that, we'd like to thank our sponsor, Lou Malnati's. Yeah, absolutely. Lou Malnati, thank you again for providing for this episode. A true Chicago classic, no pun intended, as that's one of their famous pizzas. Lou Malnati's is always a great taste of home. Haven't had Lou Malnati's before? Head over to Lou Malnati's website right now, and you can have it shipped anywhere in the continental U.S. as of right now. Might go worldwide soon, you never know. And if you're local to a Lou's, make sure to download the Lou Malnati's app and get points for every time you order. You eventually get Free pizza, cookies, wings, salad, you name it, they'll give it to you for free. So with that, let's head over to quick updates. Tony, you are so lucky you can house that lose because when it goes to your turn, I'm just going to eat. But let's go to quick updates. Bears injury report entering this game. Khalil Mack is likely out this Sunday. He's still questionable, but he has not practiced the last two days. Akeem Hicks, same exact situation, has not practiced the last two days. Um, uh, Khalil Mack had a foot injury. Akeem Hicks had an ankle injury. Allen Robinson with a hamstring injury is questionable for this upcoming Sunday's game against the Ravens. Danny Trevathan knee was just placed on IR, so he's going to be out for a significant amount of time. Elijah Wilkinson with a back injury is questionable for this Sunday's game. Uh, Eddie Jackson, hamstring, he's been limited, likely to play against the Ravens. That's a big, that's a big, big plus for the Chicago Bears. Donald Mooney with a foot injury has been limited, but he's had injuries throughout the entire season. So he's probably going to play this upcoming Sunday. Alec Ogletree is back from his ankle injury. Damian Williams is back from his knee injury. J.B. Holt is back from his concussion. And Cairo Santos is back from an elbow injury that he suffered during the bye week. I I don't even I don't even know where he would have gotten hurt from, but happy to hear he's okay. Tevin Jenkins is not likely to play this upcoming Sunday. I know a lot of people were looking forward to that, but if he does, he's going to play various snaps, be rotated in just to kind of get that NFL feel. So stay tuned for that. That has not been denied that he has been, he has not been ruled out of Sunday's game. So good to hear that big names hurt again, like Max and Hicks, that's going to hurt. And now Danny Trevathan on the IR. But, you know, Eddie Jackson being limited in practice is a great sign. I think that he is going to play. He's had two weeks to heal up that hamstring injury that he suffered, uh, you know, in the last home game before Pittsburgh against the 49ers. So, Karius Marsh, the guy that got fined for the complete hip check by well, uh, Tony. What, what was his name, Tony? His full name? Uh, Tony Carenti. Also, Cassius Marsh. Cassius Mark, excuse me. Sorry, Cassius. Sorry about that. But he is on the active roster. Well-deserved. He's going to make some more money, hopefully pay off that fine. That's good. And then Bears sign all-pro rusher Bruce Irving to a practice squad contract. Easily can be moved up this upcoming Sunday. Looking to be a replacement for Max. So Max injury could be more significant than we realize. So, Tony, a lot of Bears news after a bye week, which is kind of weird. Any thoughts on uh, what's going on so far? Uh, well, first of all, the Cairo Santos injury was funny. I, I hope he's okay. It seems like he's fine. It's just, that's such a funny injury for a kicker. It's just like, oh, his elbow, it's, he's questionable. Or, you know, because they can't do a probable anymore. They got rid of that a couple of years ago. It's like, he's going to play. It's his elbow. He's fine. So I thought that was kind of funny. But Nick, this is important. I need everyone to listen up here. I need you to help me because I am feeling dangerously good about the Chicago Bears this weekend. I told myself I wouldn't do it. We're literally, we're on a losing streak. We are not good off a of bye. But I do think they are going to handle business at home against the Ravens. I don't really, you know, we'll get into maybe why my, with my keys to the game, whatnot. I just, I loved what I saw from Justin Fields. David Montgomery is awesome. Uh, the defense scares me, but I think we'll put up enough points and get the job done. 
So I was helping myself on camera right there. I don't know if you saw, I had like a piece of pizza stuck in my teeth. So didn't, didn't want to, I just want to call that out for, before anyone else calls it out. Um, I'm not saying anything about Sunday's game because every single time I say something, there's a bad outcome. But because the Bears and Ravens are super evenly matched, which we're about to get into, I, this game is going to be fun. That's all I'm going to say is that this game is going to be fun. It's going to be competitive. And anyone that's watching this that is going to Sunday's game against the Ravens, you need to be as loud as possible every single game. Soldier Field needs to be on the Richter scale. Waves off Lake Michigan need to be higher than ever because this, this is the biggest game of the season, and it's going to be like that the rest of the season because we always say that every year at midway point. It's the biggest game of the season because the Bears, they're only one game out of the uh, final wild card spot. Vikings lost, Bears win. I don't know. All I got to say. So let's jump into the Bears offense. Versus the Ravens defense. Yeah. So this, like you said, they are pretty evenly matched. Uh, the Ravens defensive rankings. So overall they're ranked 23rd. Uh, when you kind of break it down, their passing is ranked 32nd in the league, which honestly that kind of shocked me. I didn't, I didn't realize it was that bad, but they do. They're a weird team where uh, I've heard someone say this before. So the bears are bend don't break. The Ravens are break. Don't bend. So they either, they either, you know, plug you up or it's just a 70 yard bomb over the top for a touchdown. Uh, which is kind of just kind of funny. So hopefully Justin Fields could take advantage of that. Uh, their rushing defense though is fourth in the league. Pretty good. Uh, we're Pretty right good. behind. I know we're uh, our uh, rushing defense is fifth, so it should be a great matchup. They allow uh, their points allowed is ranked twenty first. So that's a good sign for the Bears. We've been putting up more points, which is yeah. You know, we broke uh, what we broke thirty. Oh, we broke twenty last week. That's right because we missed broke twenty one last week. Broke we broke twenty one last week. Finally. Yeah. finally. Yes, yes, that was incredible. That was great to see. Uh, <laughs> so the Bears' offensive rankings, they are overall 31st, so not last, baby. Let's go. Uh, our passing is still last, though, 32nd. Uh, and I'll, <laughs> I'll touch on that in a moment. Which can change, Although, which can change. Absolutely, and I, I think it will. And uh, like I said, I'll talk about that in one moment here. So the rushing is ranked fifth, like I mentioned. Um, so it's going to be a really good matchup on the ground. I believe in David Montgomery. Again, I'll talk about that one second here. Point scored 28th. We all knew that, but we're on the right track to scoring a normal amount of points. And I, <laughs> like any other NFL team would, and I kind of appreciate that because, you know, that's how you win games. You have to score. I know uh, you guys probably didn't know that out there, but so it's the perfect matchup between their passing and their rushing. Basically, oh, they are, uh, except for, yeah, rushing and uh, the rushing rankings are one off, but their passing is <laughs> evenly matched. However, I think, Although our passing is 32nd, our last two games, I wish I uh, I had looked up what they're actually, you know, what they're ranked over the last couple of games. It looks entirely different. And I think we all have seen that. Fields is here. We're actually using our tight ends, which is insanity. I never thought we'd get to that point in this season with the fact that they just refuse to over and over. Uh, and we all know David Montgomery is just going to bowl over some Ra Ravens defenders. So I'm not too worried about that. Them having a fourth rate rushing attack. As long as we... As long as we're not just running a bunch of draws out of shotgun, obviously, you know, as long as we're actually using our guys properly, maybe mix in Khalil Herbert, who knows? Um, but yeah, that's like kind of that. what I got on that. Yeah. No, I, I think, I think you're right. We need to put Khalil Herbert in there again, number four ranked rushing uh, defense in regards to the Baltimore Ravens, but you know, Dave Montgomery and Khalil Herbert, they're no, and then now you have Damian Williams back. The bears can get away with a lot of stuff, especially if we effectively run the play action or a screen for a running back. If the Ravens are bad at passing, guess what? Throw the damn ball. No, don't run it. I mean, run it, but throw the damn ball. And especially Justin Fields' confidence coming off that Pittsburgh game has got to be sky high right now. He was in Miami working with, or Florida, excuse me, working with Brandon Marshall. You know, even though he might not have Allen Robinson, that might work out in the Bears' favor. And here's why. I just want to hit on this really fast, is that Allen Robinson and Justin Fields just started to start get some chemistry going in the Pittsburgh game. And Allen Robinson even said that himself, that they don't have the greatest chemistry right now. But Marquise Goodwin, Darnell Mooney, Cole Komet, Jimmy Graham, who's back. We want the tight end moving. I know you're going to get in that a little bit, Tony. But if you have the second string wide receivers in, if you have that guy, if Darnell Mooney, move, everyone moves up one spot, Justin Fields has worked with most of those guys for most of the time now. So he's going to have a relationship. He's going to have chemistry with them. And that gives the opportunity for the bears to really air it out at soldier field. So anyone that bought tickets, you could be in for an air show to Tony. And I went to the actual bears, air and water show game 
but this could be at 2.0, but with the football. So very exciting for that. Um, Tony, do you have anything else to hit on before we go to the Bears defense versus Ravens offense? Uh, no, I, I really think that I think Justin Fields is going to have another great game. I think actually the bye week will help the Bears for the first time in five years or whatever it's been. So eight, uh, I'm excited eight. to see it. Eight years. The Bears have not won a game after the bye week in eight years. Just want to throw that out there. Sorry to put that out there. But it's that it's it is what it is. We are we are here to break streaks. You know, we are here to do that today. And that's what the Bears are going to do this upcoming Sunday. Bears defense versus Ravens offense. Let's go into that real fast. Ravens offensive ranking. They're the 23rd ranked offense. Okay, so they're not that good. If Lamar ain't running the ball, guess what's not happening? They ain't scoring. So 23rd overall ranked offense with the pass, they're ranked 27th. But here's the shock. Even with running quarterback Lamar Jackson, their rush is ranked 27th in the NFL, according to ESPN stats. And their points scored, I didn't write it down. So that's my fault. It's probably not great. Um, Tony, if you mind looking that up while I'm running through this, that'd be great. Uh, But the rush offense for the Baltimore Ravens is very shocking to me it, it, to be honest like 27th when you have lamar jackson who could put up 100 yards himself running the ball so that's huge for the bears defense but that actually kind of hurts them the bears defense is ranked 12th overall passing defense is 10th still a shock i know a lot of people didn't like that i said the dbs get a b plus on my mid-season rating but 10th in the league against some of the harder offenses in the nfl with guys that are unproven like duke shelley kendall vildor you know jalen johnson is a second year guy that's kind of crazy rushing. They are ranked 22nd though. So they're pretty even with the Baltimore Ravens, but that could work out to our advantage, help us move up in the rankings. And it's a pretty even matchup. Then points allowed by the bears defense is ranked 22nd. So why Tony is still looking that up unless Tony, you have points allowed by the Ravens. I do not score. have that, No. Okay. Uh, so po- I have no idea where you've had it. So give me one more moment. I'll find <laughs> Yeah, so points scored by the Ravens on defense this year. We'll get that for you guys in a second. But let's go into what my overall thoughts are. Almost another perfect matchup for the Chicago Bears. Just like last week with the Pittsburgh Steelers, ironically the same division as the Baltimore Ravens. The Bears offense versus or the Bears defense versus the Ravens offense is a very good matchup and could be a fun, intense game. Now, the Ravens record doesn't tell the story about actually how they are as a team. Like Tony was saying, and not they're not Ben, don't break. Their break don't bend. They're the complete opposite. And overall, they struggle in a variety of categories. Lamar Jackson is not MVP Lamar anymore. Just have to throw that out there. And I have to say it, he's not. He's a big, he's a threat name. He's kind of like Chris Bryant when he won the NL uh, MVP and then kind of went quiet for a while. Like he was slightly above average, but was still a threat because you had the game plan around him. So just wanted to throw that out there for you folks. And I think the Bears defense can definitely hold this offense. And if they did what they did against Pittsburgh, who had a similar reign, the Bears can do very well in this game. I will not say they will win or lose, but the Bears will do very well. Tony, did you happen to get that yet? Well, 12 right. in points scored? Uh, points per game, according to not ESPN, because they didn't have a ranking system. And I didn't want to count it. Sure. Okay, so they're ranked 12. So they can put points up on the board, and they do it in scrappy ways. So still, something the Bears defense could definitely maintain, especially with the stats in the lineup. So very excited for that. So with the key comparison, Tony, what do you see before we move into our three keys of the game in regards to the Bears defense versus Baltimore's offense? Yeah, it's going to be uh, it's going to be all about how they get after the quarterback, I think. And actually, I'm going to talk about this as well. I might as well might as well kind of lead this off as maybe my first point kind of kind of combine it here. So they got to You got to get after the quarterback, but also you got to shut down. OK, this is going to sound very obvious. You got to st- shut down the running game, force Lamar to pass it. Because Marquise Brown is banged up too. Uh, Lamar Jackson didn't, you know, he just returned to practice today on Friday. So force him to pass the ball. And then once you're forcing him to pass the ball, then you got to get after the quarterback. Something that we we did okay last week. We did not do well uh, against the 49ers. Uh, the game I was at, not a big deal. Um, so that, that's the honestly, invite. yeah. So that's part <laughs> of uh, what I think about Bears uh, defense versus Ravens offense. Also my first key to the game force them to run or uh, take away the run, get after the quarterback. That's key one. Key number two is the, for the Bears, run the ball, work in Herbert if you have to. Totally not biased because he's on my fantasy team and I have just been ravaged by injuries. So I really need him to get some points. Not biased, but run the ball. Biased. David Montgomery, <laughs> yeah, a little biased. Establish the run because that open, 
credit to what you said, that opens up that play action um, over the top because they are a break don't bend defense. And I, I re- again, I really think Justin Fields is going to have a great game. I know you're probably going to talk a little bit more about that, just kind of the offense in general. Uh, and then my final key, stop me if you've heard this one before, Get the uh, continue to get the tight ends involved. I've actually never stop. said continue. Stop. Yeah. <laughs> I'll never, I won't say, uh, or uh, this is the first time I've said continue because they haven't done it until last week. Uh, but it was great to see that. There's no reason it, cl- it worked. It clearly worked. So why would you not go back to that same thing? Get Jesse James more involved like they did against the 49ers, threw him a touchdown pass. Uh, him and Justin Fields have such great chemistry. Jimmy Graham, just such a big target. There's no reason not to use him. And Cole Komet, is this his breakout game? Some people are saying yes, me. I'm the person. So Nick, what are your, uh, what are your keys of the game or any thoughts on my keys? No, I, so I like that you read them backwards. I really, I, like, I, I'm looking at your thing and it's like, you were like one, two, three. I was like, actually you read a three, two, one, but I totally agree with what you're saying, especially in regards to Cole Komet. He went up to Justin. I'm not sure who saw it, but like he went up to Justin Fields. It was like a highlight thing. He goes, Hey, we're doing good. We got a good thing going. Let's keep it up. That is what the bears need. That is the communication that fans need to see. And that is the future of the offense. If Cole Komet breaks out to be like a Jimmy Graham. And if Justin Fields truly is the franchise quarterback, which he is, we all know that's coming. Mm -hmm. So overall, very, very excited about that. And I couldn't agree more with your keys to the game. Mine are pretty similar, but you know, different at the same time. So my first one, and I'm going to read mine in order, uh, keep our offense on the field as long as possible. If the bears keep Lamar off the field, The Ravens don't have an opportunity as easy to score. They can score defensive touchdowns. They can score special teams touchdowns. Knock on wood that that doesn't happen. But if if Lamar stays off the field, the Bears have a huge advantage, especially with this offense starting to tick more and more. First 400-yard game as an offense last game, I really like the odds of that happening again, especially against a similar defense. I like the Bears in regards to this aspect. As long as you keep Lamar off the field, the Bears are going to do well. Lock down the passing game. If Lamar can't use his, if Lamar is forced to use his feet, the Bears have the speed at linebacker. As bad as this sounds, with Danny Trevathan, you know, unfortunately going on IR, I hope he gets healed up faster. Alec Ogletree is a very fast linebacker, and Roquan Smith is an absolute dart of a linebacker. If you are able to force that run, the Bears front seven, even without Mack and Hicks, is still super tough. And I really like this Bears defense against Lamar Jackson. So, as long as you lock down the passing game and force them to run Lamar Jackson, which also I don't think that they're going to be able to really run that well against the Chicago bears. Anyway, it's going to be a great game. It's going to be a great game. Mm-hmm. I, I hope that the bears look at this and go, this is the game that we have to let our guys really heal up for the final stress because stretch, because we play the Packers one more time, the Vikings twice who were always seeming to compete with for a wild card and the lions one more time. So that's four division games. That's good math. All I got to say. And then finally, thank you. And then finally, whatever they did on offense in the second half of the Pittsburgh game, do it again. Cole Komet said it, you know, I'm saying it now. NFL analysts are saying it. Let Justin Fields play that exact second half again, every half moving forward for the rest of the season. And the bears are going to win a lot more football games. So that is my, so so that's my three game. Any you, it sounds like you agree with me on that one. Yeah. I was going to say, absolutely. The only, the only reason we lost to the Steelers last week is we just ran out of time. Justin Fields was and the absolute referees. and the referees. Uh, yeah, the, you know what? There's a lot of reasons we lost to the Steelers, but one of them is we just ran out of time. Justin Fields was absolutely cooking, and uh, yeah, it just you know, unfortunately, there's a clock in football, so uh, <laughs> you you can't just play forever. It's not cricket. <laughs> no, no, it's not cricket. <laughs> so, so we're not going to do score predictions this week because I feel like every single time we've done score predictions, the Bears have lost. But the Bears, when we get Lou Malnati's guess what happens? They win. So that all I got to say is that Tony and I might get super fat, but it's off Chicago classic. So that's all we have to say. But yep. with that, Tony, as always, thank you very much for joining this episode of just another year, Chicago. I hope you enjoy your pizza and I hope to talk to you on Sunday after a great bears game. Not, I'm not saying, I'm not saying the outcome, but a great bears game. Am I right? They're going to win. I believe. You, okay, Tony could say it, but I'm, I'm not saying it. So with that, thank you very much for joining this episode of Just Another Year Chicago. My name is Dick Brody. Join alongside Tony Cepeda. Go Bears. We'll see you guys on Sunday.